Oh yeah. So what do I do with that? Just record your own. Okay. Uh, Gio. And then we are live. Four twenty. <laughs> Last dance. Four twenty. Uh -huh. 420. Oh, yeah, dude. Last Mary dance Jane's with Mary Jane. Jane. Yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah, I got him. All right, I'm going to play our intro song here. Oh, right. hit record. Do you want to count down or no? Sorry. Uh, No, I'm recording your parts so I can... Uh, oh, okay, just drop on top. Up. All right, I'm going to start recording mine now. Jake, you recording? Yes, bitch. Okay, I'm going to play our intro song. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. I don't think I can play this long because uh, I know it's always hard with the audio whenever it's mixing in or whatever. So we'll 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 play that out longer in the podcast thing. But this is uh, me and uh, TC Fleming and a uh, machine, Mike Marshall. We're going to be walking through Hello. with you uh, every one of these Sunday installments of The Last Dance. I, I guess there's 10 episodes, but if they play two of them a night. Doesn't it just seem like there's five episodes? Yeah, that's a it's dumb strategy. Uh, and, uh, and Jay Kemp is here with us for uh, for this this particular maiden voyage. We'll, we'll have some uh, fun guests and people Thanks, you recognize Jake. and enjoy throughout Whatever, the, Mike. the time. Whatever, Mike. <laughs> we value your presence, dude. Jake told uh, we're we're making this a podcast and then we're also doing a uh, a live stream and uh Jake texted me beforehand and was like oh we're doing a live stream and now I realized it was because he didn't know where his Jupiter Florida hat was it was just yeah. <laughs> searching through the house and he's still leaves. brushing his teeth it never leaves this spot it stays right <laughs> here this is my stream this is my streaming hat stream <laughs> my Jupiter Florida got that whenever I visited Epstein's house that'll be no biggie. I think um, uh, I think Jordan lives in Florida now, right? Is that because he's got the the ocean in the background? I think that house is in Florida. Oh, I, I thought he was Florida. still in Chicago. <laughs> I don't believe that there's any uh, <laughs> backgrounds like that in Chicago. It was pretty recently that he sold the uh, the Chicago house, and uh, they had like the real estate photos of. It was just crazy to see the that twenty three gate in real estate photos. <laughs> Michael Jordan has a twelve point four million dollar house. Juice. It's in Jupiter, Florida. Good. There you go. There yes, you sir. go. Yes, so it might have been right down the street. You might have driven by it. Mm -hmm. So y'all just want to talk about how... Uh, they might have been friends. Yeah, I mean, he probably visited. Um, I hope not. Y'all want to do this whole thing about how he definitely didn't just go play baseball of his own volition? Or <laughs> they glossed over that pretty quick. No, no, no dude. Part, they're gonna get, I guarantee you there's going to be a full episode on it. I feel like there's got to be, right? And he kind of laughed as he said it. He was like, yeah, and then kind of, you know... <laughs> took a vacation for 18 months yeah yeah no. that that can't be the only time they touch on it i god i hope not yeah i mean i i, I expect it because i would say that the thing so far that is just to get into documentary analysis the thing so far that has made me most excited about this documentary better than like the, how good the footage is is the fact that you can just tell from the way he's talking how he's set up everything else he does not give a fuck He's telling everything, and the time that I most, yeah, 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 that I uh, that I like had that switch go on was whenever uh, they asked him about the the Chicago Bulls traveling cocaine circuit, <laughs> and he thought about it for a second, then was like, ah, "Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. fuck it, I'm telling this." And you know yeah. that whenever that like story that. happened, if you told him thirty years from now you're going to be telling all of America that you were in that room, he would have been fucking terrified knowing yeah. that. But he was just like, fuck it, I'm telling everything. I'm just to tell every story. If you ask me a question, I'm going to answer the full fucking question. And I just can't wait to see eight more hours of that shit. Question, do you think he believes that lines is what you call cocaine? I guess so. He was so. using lines yeah. in really weird ways. I was like, who the fuck says that? Yeah. I mean, what is, what, what is this nerd. funny? Yeah. I thought it was weird that he was like, so you got your guys over here with lines. You got your weed guys. He's like, you got the guys who are into girls. I'm like, both those things go pretty well with girls. Like, are they not the same Venn diagram? Or yeah. I think I, what, what, what girls really, didn't want to be by the lines. Yeah, what you're really just what you're really talking about, Mike, are just three stages of the night, not like not three different like guys. Like everyone's into all three of them. I He's think. like, and I roll in there and I'm on meth. It's very confusing. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, uh, Roy Williams had given me some bath salts <laughs> <laughs> that, I had, uh, that I still had left when I left Chapel Hill. Now, I, I think the big question of the documentary that I'd like to uh, kick us off by asking you guys is how fucking dumb is common if he can't spell the word fucking Michael? Dude. What's going on there? I had to sit through an entire common intro at the All-Star game this year uh -huh. where each player got like 90 seconds of a poorly rhymed thing. And yeah. that was about 200% too much common for me. So whenever I saw him come on the screen, I just started yelling. I said, like, ah, <laughs> shut up, shut the fuck up. And then he tells this horrible story and I'm like, sick story, common. Like what? What is common? I'm sorry, I don't. I don't get him. Besides the guy oh, that's advocating for AI. No, 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 no. Take no, over no. the world. The train show. We don't have to go there. You don't have to take it that far. You're right. The the intro sucked, but Common has like three fucking untouchable albums, dude. Basement Evolution, and it's all because you, you say this about a lot of rappers, and no one's gonna fact check you, but dude, the the early stuff that Kanye was producing all of that, like that's some of Kanye's best work. Basement Evolution is an incredible album. It is like vintage Chicago Kanye. It's really like the song that they did on Chappelle Show, The Food. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's that's one of my favorite songs of all time. That's really, really good shit. But to his defense, the word or name Michael is spelt incorrectly. <laughs> it shouldn't have. What's this, what's this fucking C-H-A-E-L? But like, how how are you old enough to be a ball boy with having having like? I definitely remember the first time I encountered Michael, and I was like, "Huh, that's fucking weird." Yeah. But like, I was four. I don't know why it's spelled that way. Ball boys are like seven. It's my name, and I don't know why it's spelled that way. I've yeah, it's bad. It's people. wrong. Common is right. Now, if you're asking me, would I like to see how he took a crack at it? The answer is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, would you prefer that or uh, Floyd Mayweather reading one page of Harry Potter? Yeah, uh, or just him reading the Earn, uh, your, your Stripes, your stripe.com, your stripes. Earn, that was like the, the coolest The man thing. who struggles with dot com is yeah. the crazy part. That's like the coolest thing Charlemagne has ever done is just yeah. expose that Floyd Mayweather can't read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like something that was totally not supposed to be public. But uh, if Michael Jordan just went by Shale instead of Michael Jordan, yeah. it was this Shale Jordan. Would be yeah. would he be like the best player ever? No. The only reason oh, okay. he's the best player ever, and it's kind of relatable, but I feel like I didn't turn it into as much of a, a motivational tool as I could have, uh, no pun intended, was just because he sucked with tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Dude, I could not believe he was like – like he was fucking getting into that. Like yeah. he was like kind of getting yeah. misty of like, yeah, he, he just didn't love me enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't turn a fucking wrench, so my dad just really didn't like me. That's – and then that's they got archive footage of the dad just being like, "Yeah, he's right." <laughs> and <laughs> I had no use for that piece of shit. And the dad, kind of like, shit. the dad, clearly loved talking about how bad Jordan sucked with tools. He's like, "This idiot." Let me, let me yeah. <laughs> ask for a flathead, maybe a wrench. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, you guys impressed by him now? I know whenever he couldn't wipe his own ass. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's like keep your basketball and your stupid shoes. Yeah, how, you can't, what's you can't that make do me? This fucking IKEA desk, dumbass. Yeah, it's pretty great though because like that's extremely relatable. Sucking yeah. at tools. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not all of us used it to turn ourselves into the greatest athlete of all time, but yeah. I don't know. I uh, I used it the works. term pilot hole the other day, and Megan was uh, was blown away like I was Tim the Toolman <laughs> Taylor. Pilot hole. Yeah, if you're trying to screw you're something in, it. but uh, but you want to make it a little easier, you oh. gotta get that gotta get that started. Yeah, I didn't know that's what that was called. I mean, I do that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, got to drill a pilot hole. Okay, <laughs> don't get too impressed. How proud he is over here. <laughs> don't have to hose you down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I you know I I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, each of our you know previous relationships with this team because. We're all the same age, and that's a big part of this whole deal for me. Is you know, I had no no concept of uh, something like this. You know, it's not like I I could compare it to the the Lakers in the eighties because I didn't know there was a team called the Lakers at the time. Um, you know, like I I 
I, you guys know I, I didn't really give about a shit about sports whenever I was a kid. It's more of a chrono trigger guy. Uh, but this was the only thing that I did care about. Like I, like I said, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what the other teams in the league were. Um, but we, we had the, the deal where you, uh, had to buy like a 12 Maverick, uh, 12 game pack to get the bulls game. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, yeah. So we, we, we did that. And like, I, you know, I, I saw Jordan play at reunion arena a couple times. And, uh, the first sports mo moment I remember at all, like watching live and caring about is the the final moment of this season whenever he uh, clearly pushes off to uh, hit the jumper. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, don't admit that. <laughs> I mean, you know, he pretty much like whenever they asked him about it that day, he was like, you know, fucking the rules are what the ref says they are, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is at that point. Um, but yeah, so I, I you know, th this this was just a, a a huge deal to me. The the, the team and like they just seemed like far bigger than a sports team and I, I didn't know if that was i mean i know everyone loves 90s bulls and sees their big deal but I, I would love to hear it in your own words and if it if it felt like as big as the 90s cowboys or if it felt bigger to me it felt bigger but i figure that that might not be a majority opinion well yeah i mean there's the whole space jam tie-in right which was yeah. the hugest movie besides like ninja turtles for us as a kid probably um yeah i was i was honestly a supersonics fan when I was little because they were the other team. They were the, the Western Conference team that made it to the finals, I think in 96 against Jordan's Bulls. And my dad was super sports guy and he was super like sports talk radio guy. And so whenever I started getting older and it was, who do you choose to be a fan of? Immediately I was, you know, just drawn to Sean Kemp and how he played. Um, I think the first finals I stayed up, well, the first time I ever stayed up like past my bedtime, like I remember being up past midnight was uh, Akeem and Shaq finals. So Magic versus Rockets finals, um, whenever that was, like 93 or something like that. And so then then Jordan came along um, and was the biggest deal. And my dad like just thought Michael Jordan was a fucking worm. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like pretty boy asshole, like all this stuff. So that just kind of pushed me over to like the supersonic side because that was the time when I was like, I'm all in the NBA. I got all the pencils. I got this like binder with all these players, the stat cards on them. I was collecting cards and I was super into the NBA at that time. And Supersonics made the finals. So that was my team. They were the they were the villain in a lot of people's eyes to Jordan's good guy or my good guy uh, to Jordan's villain. So I was always aware of him, um, but I don't think I really appreciated him or understood how like freaking huge he was until Space Jam. Um, even even the titles, like there's got to be a team that wins titles. And when we were young, you just assumed there were teams that won five titles in six years because the Cowboys did it, the Bulls did it, the Yankees did it like every other year. So I just that's thought true. that's how sports. I thought that's how sports worked. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, and there's dynasties. Yeah, and I was like, there's the next team that's going to win five in seven years, and it's just kind of how sports works right now. Um, but it took me probably till I was like four, fifteen to be like, yeah, this is the greatest athlete that's ever lived. Um, and the 90s Bulls will never be replicated again uh, to kind of get a grasp on that. Um, finally seeing what the Lakers did once they got Shaq. And like, that's the most unstoppable force the world's ever seen, right? Shaq and Kobe. Oh, they didn't get five titles. They didn't get six titles. So this is still better, right? So that's kind of my early relationship until probably, I don't know, 15, 16 with, with Michael Jordan and the 90s Bulls. Yeah, just sorry. I I I, I want to hear your thing too, Jake. But just the the, the way that they like uh, uh, seemed absolutely inevitable that they were going to win, especially that that sixth one. Like the way in the documentary where they're just that's all they're talking about. Which like, of course, they're playing basketball and they're they're very good. So they're 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 and saying that they're going to to do well. But like, I I just uh, I the degree to which that that was just an absolute certainty they're going to win every single time there's been times where it felt like we were close to matching that uh but but you know like like that heat third title i thought that was in hand uh that they just they were they were a team that was good enough they were, they were going to win three straight but then they didn't and then you know the warriors same thing that that felt, you know whenever that was on on the the rise you uh you figure this is a team that's surely going to win three straight maybe more and uh they also did not right they they went one and then the two yeah. Um, yeah, they went so, to five straight. 
Not yeah, three, just, not four, not five, not <laughs> six, not seven A. So just so many teams since then have. I mean, I guess the Lakers did get to that third, but then the, then the second time, whenever the Lakers were trying it, you, you thought they would, but uh, no, Mavericks topped them. Um, I hated the Bulls growing up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely hated them. I mean, <clears throat> I was a I dabbled as a Sonics fan as well. I also had a brief time as a Suns fan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just because yeah. you know, like you were searching go. for, dude, and Go was in uh, episode two, right? Yes, he was. He, he dumped a uh, little bitty the bull yeah. stuffed animal, but no, nah, I mean, I hated them and I hated him. To be honest with you, I was so fucking tired of Michael Jordan growing up, and really, I just, yeah, dude, I was like, you know, the Mavericks sucked. Um, Space Jam, though, might have been a turning point moment for me because I didn't know anybody who didn't like that movie. Yeah. yeah. Whenever uh, he started letting him into McDonald's, that was too much. That was yeah. like one bridge too far. I was like, get this motherfucker out of my McDonald's. Dude, that's the thing is like as far back as I can remember, I have so little personality that my identity has always been too tied up and being like, well, I'm not going to like what these people like. Is so stupid, dude. But like my first basketball jersey was a Drexler Dream Team in 1992 because everybody had the Jordan one. And I was just like, fuck that. Like, I don't want Michael Jordan. Like, this dude's a clown. But it was really just because I was mad, you know? <laughs> and I remember learning pretty early on that he was taking only one pick before the Mavericks drafted. Um, so I was just like, you know. I've been attending the player haters ball every year for like 30, almost 30 years now. So hosting. Yeah. I, I did not have a high opinion of Michael Jordan as a kid, but obviously now, dude, I mean, yeah. Are you well, how, how do you feel about the whole thing? Looking back? Uh, you know, different, there's different stuff that they didn't even really touch on in the documentary yet. Like I do think that there's something to like, almost like his existence as incredible as it was like it kind of broke sports in the sense that like now if you're not like this psychopath then you don't care type thing like his pathos or whatever is not healthy for humans and it's like if you don't live that way then you're you're you know you just don't care like you don't care like that's what people say right that he he's the guy who created this like fuck everything and everybody except for me and me winning <laughs> and it's like it's awesome for him but i think a lot of people buy into that shit it's toxic right mm -hmm. like that's not it's no way to live dude but, i can't wait to see eight more hours of that the, the time that i thought it came most to the surface was whenever he was talking about pippen being out for the start of the 97 98 season and was just like like he was talking about an eight game stretch to open they opened the season four and four, four, and, four and, yeah. and oh and four on the road and talking about that eight game stretch was just like now like it wasn't like yeah. they, they had the clips from then now was like dude when you're trying to dominate someone you can't let that flicker of hope live in their mind i'm like yeah. dude this guy really fucking believes that he is winning or losing the title in the first eight game like because it's one thing like like it's it's like sometimes someone would say something like that and you're like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. They're trying to psych themselves up. So talking themselves into anything. It didn't seem like he was talking himself into, into shit. It no. felt like an honest belief in his heart was that if we let them think for two fucking seconds that we're going to do anything other than crush them, then that's going to drive me crazy and I'm not allowing it to happen. That was, I mean, like, that's you're right. It's dark. Titles. It's fucked up. But it's that's crazy. after five titles. Yeah. yeah, he won yeah. five championships in game eight of the season. He's breaking the huddle going, let's go get our first win because they hadn't won on the road yet. Yeah, and then yeah. he goes, I'm not going to say this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, Everyone looked so terrified. Tony Kukoc looked like he was going to shit his pants. Yeah, Ron Har poor Ron <laughs> Harper, man. Damn. He but yeah, him. you know, I mean, it's awesome because it was him, but I think it's, it's kind of like a different version of – you know, Coop is <laughs> Coop is tweeting a lot about this, and because yeah. he was letting everybody know that he's not actually that excited about it because there's been too much hype. Mm. Okay. Um, is the coverage worse than the actual thing, or yeah, exactly. Jose though. Fernandez of documentaries. So there's that. Plus, you know, he's doing the why didn't 
That's a good one. Why didn't they tell uh, Jordan to stop taking these bad shots? It's like, okay, the point is that they're not bad shots for him. They're bad shots for players today who aren't him. And I think a bunch of other people like try to be Jordan and like try to be this like maniac, but it's like, dude, you're not. You're faking the funk. Dude, that's entirely. why I was never like a Kobe stan, right? Yeah. Like respected the hell out of him. Like he's an incredible player, but – I was like, you're just trying to act exactly like MJ, and I witnessed this. Like, and it Mike wasn't, just it wasn't cool. good at it. Kobe yeah. shot 45%. Jordan was at 50 the whole time. As a fucking two guard, he was a 50% shooter. Like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Kobe didn't come close to that. Yeah. Anyways. That's why I didn't, uh, I didn't like the, the excuse that, like, someone else had used this path and used this mentality to become the greatest player of all time so that now if I use it, you can criticize me. I'm, I am free of criticism. If I blame all my teammates and yell at them constantly, we're good. Right. Like, you that, can't so that's, me. that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. And yeah. Like that being a psychopath is not a redeeming quality. It's just this singular case of a dude who was able to pull it off makes it really interesting. But I also think like ruined a lot of shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Uh, did, did you guys see the Randy Galloway column about the Mavericks oh. having the fourth pick? So good, dude. So Is he happy about Sam Perkins? Uh, he he just before the leading draft. up to the draft, yeah, w- wanted the Mavericks to know if you get the chance to draft Jordan, stay the fuck away. He's only six six. Yeah, and he had some. Extreme, he had like a really columnist of that era yeah. type thing where it's like, don't show me videos of uh, thriller videos of Michael Jet. Jordan, <laughs> he did. He yeah, wrote out JAC and then had dot dot dot. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, it's so weird. Weird. It strikes it's again. Respect, no doubt. Um, so what did you guys? Th- I it kind of seems like the story of this documentary is Michael Jordan, but it also is like yeah, yeah, like what the fuck was going on with Jerry Krause? Dude, I didn't know any of this. Like honestly, I didn't. I I knew that they broke up at some point, like the team ended and Pippen went to wherever he went, Portland and then Houston eventually, I think. Um, But I just thought like Pippen wanted to go get his money. Like that just made sense. But I didn't know, like they were just openly like on team buses, like clowning on the GM. Like number one, why is the GM on the bus most of the time? But, uh, and then at practice, just like dunking on him, just throwing oops to each other, like and one mixtape and just, hey, Jerry, you take do, that. Uh, you want to do layups, Jerry? Sh- sure. Yeah. Well, then we got to lower the rims. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know this. Like, I, I wasn't that aware at that time. And the, the clip of, uh, are you taking those pills to keep you short or are those diet pills, Jerry? <laughs> Dude. It's got to be one or the other. I've never, I, I would bet that that is not like a, oh, we just didn't know that was going on. Like, this was not happening anywhere else. No. Or like a GM is literally the foil. Like, the Do you think that has ever happened before or since? That's what I'm saying is I, yeah. I would bet not. Like, maybe to the, maybe private. I could not conceive of, of someone going up to a GM like, hey, you no. short fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think you're nothing. Dude. Um, so I, didn't, I didn't know Scotty had so many problems too. Like, like, I, I was disappointed I that they only talked about it and didn't have video. I feel like they should have had video of Scott. Oh, you want a video of the stroke? Oh, I thought you meant of, <laughs> of his death. <laughs> what a dick. No. <laughs> well, you said you didn't know he had so many problems, and you're like, I want video. I want to see. <laughs> Scotty Pippen's like a really sweet guy. Like, I've had yeah. to talk to him at Dirk's thing, and he's like the most thoughtful, like, okay, okay, how much? Like, that type of guy. Um, great voice, too. That fucking subwoofer's oh, like, rattling. Whenever that guy starts talking, I'm like, just read yeah. bedtime stories, shit. Whatever you, whatever you want to talk about, Scotty. Get him but I didn't know he was just. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know he was just like, fuck this. At some point, like, get me out of here. See, I had no idea. That's a guy that I think Jordan. He fucked his head up because Scotty Pippen seemed like a sweet kid. You know, like he's just the kind of aw shucksy. Although I guess he did immediately come in and say, "I'm going to be better than Jordan," but I feel like he wore off. Like the big kid had way too much of an influence on the freshman mm-hmm. and he's like oh i guess we're just shitty to everyone all the time now <laughs> like that's yeah. just what we do here huh i yeah. think there's something to that yeah, yeah. especially whenever you're that close to well, him and like, like you have uh, no choice but to try and follow him yeah yeah it's like it's like the uh on neil brennan's last stand up he goes it was some reason he was talking about the ray rice thing and he was like you know i don't get upset with football players whenever they do weird shit or domestic violence because like every moment in their life it's like do football 
do more football. Oh, this time I wasn't supposed to do football. Yeah. Like this one time I wasn't supposed to do football. Okay. That's what I think Scotty was like. He was like, he was like, be an asshole, be an asshole, be an asshole. Oh, this one time I can't be an asshole for yeah. real. I did know the Scotty things must have been bad yeah. because Phil was actually like, hey, take it easy on Gary, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, sure. could you imagine what it would take for Phil to go in and be like talking for on behalf of Jerry, <laughs> trying to get nicer treatment of Jerry, the guy yeah. who already said, I'm making sure he's fired at the end of the year? Unreal. <laughs> like, I, I, the, it, it jogged. I wanted to watch this because of, uh, because I knew there's half shit that I just have no recollection of because I was super young at the time. Um, like that, the press conference, the finals press conference in 97 that they quote extensively, I didn't remember that at all. And every Dude. single one of those quotes is insane that he said that Dude. after a game. That's the most insane finals press conference I've ever heard. Yes. Yeah. Like, Ever like Jordan, like they're just straight up just throwing grenades at Jordan. Like, so this team's over, right? And he's just like, you know, it's not up to me. Love to keep the team together, but you know, if you keep winning and like, it's like if they'd asked Durant, it up. like after he tore his uh, his Achilles, like, yeah. so what's what is your problem with Draymond? He was just yeah. like, listen, that motherfucker, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know the Jerry Krauss baseball thing, I guess he did actually work as a basketball scout before that that's because, insane yeah but he did like he didn't play basketball but he can y'all hear that buzz no nah, i don't hear a noise time. okay um yeah so he i guess that's how he knew phil like he scouted phil in college and i really wanted okay. him to draft phil whenever he was with the baltimore bullets Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. But he did, you know, didn't work in basketball for several years. Went to baseball. That's just, yeah, Does it, it's very like, odd to me the idea that somebody could scout a sport that they've never even played. Like on the I, uh, one hand, like the, the being a GM, like kind of seems like it's a lot of skills. That like if you just know how to negotiate, I guess I guess you could do it. And like if you put together a draft board before, does it matter really which sport? You know, like you're listening to the scouts either way. But, you just gotta know how to gather information. Like, yeah, honestly, I guess that's true. Like, yeah, like, but it, I, don't know, I, mean, I don't know if Donnie's no like. Does that. A, I don't know if like Donnie has like an eye if he can watch a guy play and just go like, that guy's the twentieth best player in this draft versus that guy's the sixtieth best player in this draft. He just has information. He knows who to talk to, and he's always gathering it like constantly. So that's yeah, but, that. I think that's what you do. Yeah, yeah, and so you know it, that it made me think like it it shouldn't be as crazy as it is that people transition sports, but like he probably shouldn't been able to. Because, uh, <laughs> he just seems. I mean, I don't know. On the one hand, like the guy did draft Scottie Pippen. It, it, I think you could make an a, a, an argument that this documentary so far has not been uh, super fair to Jerry Krause. Yeah, uh, and may, maybe that'll change. Uh, but the only but person back at him is like Winnings, and Winnington's like it's fine, dude. Like what? Are you yeah, about? but even him, he's like he's a nice enough guy. But yeah, nice you know, enough guy. Had his I, uh, flaws. I really liked when that Sports Center, or I think it was a Sports Center interview, interview clip where uh, you know Jerry says players and coaches alone can't win championships, and he gets misquoted. Yeah, and they keep rolling the interview, and Krause just goes, "Yeah, he took the word alone out of there, <laughs> yeah. dumb son of a bitch." Yeah, and I'm like, you just said dumb son of a bitch during an interview. Like, what <laughs> proved him wrong. is this? Yeah, yeah. But you, yeah. Talk, you talk about Bill Winnington's facial hair, mm. it's very good. Yeah, it's great. You, you're talking him. to two big Winnington fans, so yeah. that's what you're getting. I, I, I can almost guarantee you that he protested stay at home orders at a Capitol this week. <laughs> no, dude, I don't think he's that Absolutely way. Absolutely not. I think you got to paint him wrong. I don't know, man. That facial hair says uh, protest. He's my second favorite Whittington behind Chase. Yeah. Well, it's a different last Thanks. name, but oh, sure. Facts only. Uh, no, to see Reinsdorf, like, like that he's – there was a couple times where I'm looking at Reinsdorf like, you've had 20, 30 years to come up with an answer to these questions. And this <laughs> is what you've got. Uh, yeah. So for the, the Kraus hiring thing, he was just like – yeah, I talked to a lot of people. All of them said he was dog shit, but <laughs> I, said, I, <laughs> Dude, I like I like the uh, the one part that actually got me like physically upset was uh, Reinsdorf saying, "Well, Kraus gave Phil Jackson his shot. If there wasn't for Jerry Kraus, you'd never know who Phil Jackson was." 
And I was like, that's the most like smoke filled room, old white man thing to say is if I didn't give you this shot, like you'd be nothing. I'm like, Phil Jackson is one of the greatest coaches that's ever lived. I think he would have figured it out. Yeah, he was plucked from nowhere, though. Yeah, I mean, I get that part, but Phil Jackson would have figured that shit out, man. I Like, I'm, okay. I'm with you. But I, that was kind of the thing I was thinking about in this documentary. Just wanted to talk about Pippen uh, and how he went from, like, being the team manager to, like, eventually mm -hmm. being allowed to play at an NAIA school, which made me wonder, like, if, if he can – if that can happen with him, like – are there guys that could be all NBA that just like never touch a ball? Oh, probably. I mean, are guys that never play or never even get like any kind of look? Probably not like, anymore. Yeah, scouting's gotten pretty good, but I'm sure there's a handful of the greatest players that have ever lived that never played like Division One college basketball in any fashion, just because it just wasn't, you know, you just keep the kid over there. Like he's, no, he ain't shit. Yeah. Did you guys uh, notice that uh, I think Michael Jordan's mom calls his dad Mr. Jordan? She certainly does. <laughs> what do you think's going on there, Jake? I don't know, man. I mean, my grandma calls my grandfather Sir. Okay. But she's never gone so far as to call him Mr. You know, la in last name. That's <laughs> That feels about the same to me. It, well, it might be, but it also feels like the type of guy who would have a son who's a maniacal asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just couldn't get over the idea of a, a six-time <coughs> champion, and that, like, the GM, the Krause's whole thing. I get Krause's thing, like, like it's 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 insane, and I've never really seen it, this streak play out to this degree on this biggest stage. But we've all met people who have that fascist instinct in them, where like they don't even like the fact that they have power over you; they only like seeing you know how much power they have over you. And like, they, they seem to have just spent their whole career trying to amass that, like for the purpose of like exploiting people and like wrecking lives and just like walk, sitting back and laughing and being like, it's, isn't it cool? I can do this. And that's what Krause has got, you know, we're like, he, he wants to break up the fucking nineties bulls just <laughs> so that everyone, like just so that the bulls will understand that he could do it. Like, I, I'm sure that he wanted to build another contender, like all on his own. And that that would have been neat. But one, if he had, he probably just would have feuded with those players. And two, he didn't even really care that much about that. Just so long as Michael Jordan understood that Jerry fucking Kraus would be the one to decide whether or not he was still playing basketball. Like, because it, it like. That quote about Phil Jackson, whenever he got his contract was, I don't know if that was a widely televised or popular thing where he's like, oh, they got it taken care of, but this will be the last year Phil's a coach. I was like, so the, insane. how is this? Has this ever fucking happened? Yeah. And I don't like remember. people will do one year deals, but they won't just be like, yeah, this is last year and he's done. I can't remember. In the middle of a title run. In the documentary, if I read it, but he told somebody, I don't give a fuck if they go 82 and 0. Yeah. That was the yeah. Doc. Okay. That yeah. Was he's the doc. like, no, nah, I don't care. I literally yeah. do not winning, care. Winning doesn't matter to me. Winning does not matter to me. Go 98. No. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Like that's the like the ultimate example of not keeping the main thing the main thing. Yeah, like, that's number like, one because to the, me. the wins like, were not important. What he was looking is for them no. to understand exactly <laughs> how much power he could he could exert. And yeah. I, like, so I I get Kraus on that level, but like, what's Reinsdorf doing? Like, what what's yeah, the fucking know. point for him? Like, he's just like the, he's got the guy in his ear who's like, I want to blow it up just to just to show him. And then Reinsdorf's like, yeah, let's show him. Reinsdorf's the one that loses all this money if they're not doing that the next year. See, How much fucking revenue do you think the Bulls generated from fucking 98 to or 99 to, I don't know, now? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. The, the the Losing the forest through the trees for ego, I get. But for money, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand like why they were fucking with this cash cow. Like It's not like they were just good. They were the most marketable team of all time. And now you're just going to go yeah. piss this guy off? Yeah. I mean, it's. I really wish Jerry Krause was still alive, just so you could possibly hear some explanation for any of this shit. Yeah. But turns out a guy who has players making fun of him for taking the short pills didn't make it that much longer. Hey, hey, yeah. You know, oh, gotta, sorry. I forgot that earlier you said he reminded you of you. <laughs> just, you know, similar shape. <laughs> two round boys 
<laughs> Healthy boys. Yeah. <laughs> I love the minutes, the minutes restriction bit was hilarious. That is oh, so that was great. And that's another that's another perfect example of the like you think it was really important to them that it'd be 14 minutes exactly because like they had medical reasons? Or do you think no. they want him to understand who is making this call? Yeah, it's obvious. Like, yeah, that He's was that was a guy who just yeah. that like crunched some numbers and came back and was like 14. 14 minutes. It says right here. Calculator spit out 14 minutes. So 14 it is. 14.01. Guy's going to fucking die in the court. Okay? He's going to be dead. I, I am 14. so glad they spent that much time on the injury. Because I, I think that's a huge deal. And mm -hmm. I also think that it's one of the most insane things about a career that's full of insanity that mm -hmm. he did not have serious problems afterwards. Yeah. Like, to break your fucking foot? You know how many basketball players break their foot and that's it? Was that a like, was that a Liz Frank uh, fracture? I'm not like sure. That bone, I think it was because the guy was describing it like yeah, the same one that KD had, where KD broke his foot and it was like if it doesn't heal properly, if it breaks again, you're just like fucking done. Like you yeah. don't play sports anymore. Like that was uh, that was Yao Ming, right? I thought his yeah. was like uh, yeah, foot. Yeah, foot. Yao Ming and uh, a lot of big men have it. Oblowski yeah, has had it. He was like one of the more famous ones where you you, you don't play anymore. Sorry. And and how great do you think that sports medicine was in 1985? Oh my god, nah. Like it was just a story about mix. playing playing um, at North Carolina, playing pickup games. And he's like, and I came back, and my one calf was just it was just bigger than my other calf. And they were like, "What's going <laughs> on here, Michael?" <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you guys, but I've been playing five on five every single day <laughs> against college kids. <laughs> I've been deadlifting 600 pounds. In Not a big deal. It's like it's on the one hand, it's insane that the doctor's like, Yeah, if he ever breaks it again, like that's fucking it. And yeah. Jordan's just like, fuck it, I want in. Yeah. And then, then they are like, uh, yeah, yeah, let him in, let him in. And then they do the minutes restriction, but that's followed by the playoff series against the Celtics. We're like, I don't really know how you do a minutes restriction in the playoffs. Like uh, clearly, you know, he's not gonna be okay with that, but there's there's something between that and having him play nearly every minute of a two overtime game. Minutes. It's yeah. just stu half measure stupid shit, man. <laughs> Insane. And like, like there's, there's no point of the restriction or just don't play him at all. Yeah. It is that doesn't make any sense at all to me. And also, if you let him only play 14 minutes, he's gonna try to bust their ass the entire 14 minutes and take mm -hmm. basically the same number of shots as he would in 35 minutes. So it's like, dude, you're probably making this worse. <laughs> Yeah, by by telling him he only has fourteen because he's gonna go try to get his thirty. Yeah. Um, now the, I I I wonder how much more they have on the time between then and the uh, uh, start of the championships. But I was I was interested that they that they did spend that much time on uh, year two and like I don't know. I guess I would not have previously identified that as the beginning of his rift with the front office, but I think that's why they were laying that whole thing out is to say like this is the first time that he realized he was dealing with people who are radically different than him and like he just lost yeah, respect for him the, the rewinds and episode two the year two ones whenever like you were explaining the the rift and all that made made a lot more sense <laughs> episode one rewinds i was like why are we jumping back to like this random shit like i didn't i didn't understand the rewinds in episode one but i don't know i kind of like the whole jumping around thing I, I think that generated some controversy on the internet, but uh, they, they just got like a dream within a dream at one point where they were talking about Paris on the preseason, and then they jumped back yeah. to uh, they were like, "Shit, we got this Bob Costas footage. We got to fucking use it somewhere." And he's talking about how the Bulls sucked, and they were getting out out on by a by an indoor soccer team and all that shit. And then they jumped into something else right after that, and I was like, "Guys, we're going. We're we're a few too many loops like removed from. Forgot what the fuck we're talking about." I'm like, are we? Are we? The national championship now? Yeah. yeah. Like, are we, is he shooting the game winning shot now? We're yeah. here. Like, that was weird. Yeah. That was fucking yeah. awesome. That James James Worthy pops up and I'm like, shit, I thought we were in Paris. Yeah. But just that that, that he and James Worthy were on the same team and played against Patrick mm -hmm. Ewing in a championship. That's fucking great. That's pretty cool. I just love that that happened. Uh the 84 Olympics thing is great too. Um I, I in preparation for this watched the uh basketball love story part on Michael Jordan. Bob recommended it. He was talking about it last week. Yeah, I've been and, uh, that and I haven't. They uh they talk a lot about the 84 Olympics in that. And like that there was uh like as a warm-up thing, 
they were playing a series of like NBA all-star teams and the Jordan's team just like kept on beating him. The all-stars kept on getting like really fucking mad. And mm-hmm. uh, then, then he would just go out and beat him again. And they, they have a whole thing. And I've, I heard this in the, uh, the Bob Knight book. I'm pretty sure that John Feinstein talks about this a little bit. Uh, just uh, whenever he first got to the the team night, the, the 84 Olympic team was just like, uh, yeah, Jordan's kind of dog shit. He can't shoot like he's a guard. He <laughs> can't shoot. What do you want from me on this? And that by the end of it was like, that's the best player I'm ever going to coach. Like just had so much respect for his want to like his just the, Bob Knight, like looking for someone else who was just as maniacal as Bob Knight. Like this is the first time in his life that he's like, all right, this guy gets it. <laughs> he, he knows why we got to throw chairs at people. Like this is a finally another <laughs> fucking chair thrower. Um, and yeah, you, you could see how they would fit with each other. Yeah. Same personality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would love to see more of the uh, number nine Jordan team USA jerseys. Uh, get back yeah. to uh, rotation at, at various festivals. That that was a solid one. I forgot. Yeah. And I just I want I want more. I'm I don't mind my timelines wrong, but Dream Team is later, right? Ninety two. Yeah. Ninety two. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, wait, I, think I, need, I, neighbor, I think my neighbor's beating her kid up. <laughs> Ooh, that's rough. Yeah, quarantine's tough. Oh, um, <laughs> um, I need I need a lot more Olympics. Just, just honestly, I need a lot more Olympics footage. I need more than one soundbite of Bob Knight. Like, is Bob Knight being canceled? Is, can we not show Bob Knight anymore? Like, I want to hear those uh, stories that you were just explaining. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's it's on ESPN app, like uh, the basketball love story. I think it's uh, episode seven, chapter two. Um, mm-hmm. You're gonna love it, and I, I bet that they'll do a lot on the the '92 Dream Team whenever they get to that. Um, yeah, no, as far as to. Uh, Talk about the uh, Reinstorf thing a little bit more. Um, you know, that's that's someone that's very involved in my life as the owner of two franchises that I care very much about. Uh, I'm I'm interested. What what were your guys' takes on him? I mean, I've certainly got more on him, but you know, I want to know what someone who hasn't spent their entire life thinking about Jerry <laughs> Reinstorf thinks about Jerry Reinstorf after heavy exposure to him over the course of an hour. I don't know anything about him other than this. Yeah, like, I don't know anything about. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't know how he made his money. Like, did he inherit the teams or something? Uh, I think that he's a finance guy. Okay. I mean, he bought I mean, the White Sox in like uh, the 80s. So, I mean, it would have been, you know, it, it, not like hedge funds in the way that we have hedge funds now, but, you know, um, like original Gordon Gecko shit. I think that's okay. the kind of shit he did. He looks like a little fucking twerp. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know. I, I did not find him likable in this whatsoever, but I, I I didn't know if that was me, my current feelings bleeding in. I was fine. I mean, I was fine with him, honestly. Like, I've seen a lot of owners talk and a lot of people that have no relationship to reality or know what a gallon of milk costs type yeah. people. Uh, he didn't really rub me that way. Like, I knew that he was Jerry Reinsdorf, and I, you know, I know there's some, some, uh, some heat that surrounds him. Um, but I, I just, Watching him on the face, I was like, he seems like a, a reasonable guy. Like, he seems like kind of a dipshit, kind of like 20 years after the fact, doesn't have an ex- explanation for, you know, why he let Kraus break up the greatest team that's ever existed in professional sports. But he had that. Was- and then the, the other thing that really pissed me off, and I, I think it's got a lot of people going, is he already won the Scotty thing. Like he got to enjoy all of the profits of Scottie Pippen. Uh, whenever they said it was a seven-year, eighteen million dollar contract, I was like, eighteen million dollars a year—that's a fair salary. What's he complaining about? <laughs> um, and it really took me a second to realize that was the total for the deal. Uh, and, and so Kraus got all of that. Like as far as like who you know who was stealing Scotty's money, it what or not not Kraus Reinsdorf. Reinsdorf was the guy who got that, and then he's sitting there like. Uh, Fucking come back to me and talk about renegotiating. You signed the deal, motherfucker. Shut up. Yeah. Like you already won, shitty. dude. Why do you need to piss on him after you won? That was shitty. And I thought it was weird too that he was like, Yeah, I mean, I told him and Michael, don't sign these deals. I don't fucking believe that for a second. Not no. a fucking chance. <laughs> that didn't happen. That's such horse shit, man. That like, didn't happen. On. So you told him don't sign the deal, and then whenever he did, you told him, but don't come back and try to renegotiate with me mm-hmm. ever. 
Like, yeah. come on. Did have yeah. a sick Rodney Dangerfield reference, though. That was a good one. I, I did have to <laughs> drop it. I was like, whoa. I gotta, um, I gotta reevaluate this guy a little bit. As far as the Paris stuff, I thought the best footage, like from the the stuff from the camera crew that was following them around, uh, mm-hmm. my favorite bit so far is the guy putting the mic on him at the the French the sound studio, guy, where he's like, "Can I get an autograph?" And Michael yeah. doesn't say a word, just looks he to just the looks next at him. where the guy's like, no, "Dude, no, not a, no." That was he just, he just gave him the "come get your boy" look. Yes. Come. It was. I don't, I'm gonna pretend like I don't know what he's saying. How but, fucking crazy was that? Yeah. No. I mean, I've definitely been in a uh, another country with a basketball team when people approaching <laughs> them asking them to sign things, and uh, them just kind of going and looking at security man, and that's the move. I mean, that's the move. Like you don't expect it to happen when you're on probably like whatever uh, French Oprah is or whatever that show was, but yeah. Yeah, that, I mean that that shit for sure happens where people. Oh, I won't sign anything. Well, yeah, that and uh, just people don't really give a shit about acting professional if they're never going to see you again. Like he's a sound guy, right? If he is like mic up somebody next week, in theory, yeah. you, can, you can get fired because of this. In theory, like if you work for a news organization and you're just yeah. like putting sound mics and packs on people, and then just like. Hey, can you go ahead and uh, go ahead and put that autograph on here? What's going on, huh? How are you, have you, how guys, you doing? Have you guys seen the uh, the chameleonaire story that's come out? No. <laughs> Please tell me. So <laughs> this is like 2009, I want to say. Uh, I think it was at a okay. It's a Reggie Bush charity auction. <laughs> chameleonaire, <laughs> who's like Reggie Bush? Chameleonaire is like a fucking billionaire. Uh, he's done extremely, extremely well for himself. Like in stonks technology and stuff he made his money work for him and he was also like had the biggest album in the world for like two years and i saw this story it says uh let's see here rapper approached jordan who was sitting next to spike lee and paul pierce they were just chilling and i said i don't mean to be rude but mike i just wanted to know if i could get a picture he said he was expecting a no, but wasn't expecting Jordan's delivery. According to Chameleonaire, Jordan said, I ain't taking no pictures with no blank. Yeah. Stunned, the rapper thought the basketball star didn't hear him correctly and tried to smooth things over by explaining he just paid seven G's for one of his jersey. Jordan's response was, you know what? I'll tell you what. You pay 15000 right now for a jersey for me, and I'll take a picture with you. <laughs> Paul Pierce tried to chime in, was like, yo, whoa, chill out. That's chameleon air, man. Jordan didn't budge and yelled, I don't give a fuck, in. <laughs> uh, it it oh. wasn't Jordan. It was someone like saying that they had heard Jordan say it, but on one of those morning shows, was uh, relaying a time that Jordan, Michael Jordan was like, I fucking hate rap. Yeah, he, does, he, does. <laughs> yeah. he said that a bunch. Yeah. yeah. That's Which like listen. makes you wonder what he listens to. Is he like only a Hootie and the Blowfish guy? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't have time for music, man. I guess so. I mean, not when he's working out. No. He Why they use like '90s rap L Cool J songs in this doc? Then if he doesn't like them, that was fucking tight though. Hearing "I'm Bad Again," mm. that's a badass song. That was, a, and I think that was during the '63 point game. Uh, fun thing that you can uh, think about throughout the rest of this documentary on, on the, the Reinsdorf topic, they referred a couple times in this to the, uh, the Berto center. That's the name of the mm-hmm. Bulls practice facility. Yeah. Uh, they, they moved one to close one closer to the city in like 2014, but they're using the Berto center this whole time. Uh, Berto is the last name of uh, like, uh, Reinsdorf's personal secretary. Like, I, I, I think that, I think that she like fell ill around the time that this is being built or something like that. And it, it, it really speaks to like the, the dual nature of like, on the one hand, like that's a extremely fucking despotic thing to do is to be like, well, uh, this, this person was close to me. So like, they definitely matter and they're a huge deal. Like she's a secretary dude. But on the other hand, like I'm sure her family was like extremely fucking moved. And like, you know, he was, he was taking someone who did not have, everything and being like yeah but you know she she worked real hard and gave a lot to this organization so we're gonna name it the berto center not the jordan center um you know i i don't know uh i wonder where that came from i I didn't 
I, didn't, I thought it was like maybe like some a random local brand or some shit. Yeah, I thought it was like yeah. a nacho company or something. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just his secretary who died. Mm, that's, that's better. The deal. Yeah, United Center is huge, by the way. I've been there way too many times in the last couple of months. That place is fucking humongous. I really? love it, man. Yes, it is huge, dude. It is really, really fucking big. Like, I uh, just... Whenever it, it was before this season, um, or you know what? <coughs> it must have been after because uh, there was some question about whether or not we we're going to be able to go in the locker room because of the lockout. So this this was... They still had Jordan's locker set up and everything, um, but I, I guess, I, guess you, I don't know exactly how this lines up. But whenever I was a kid, my, I went to visit my grandparents and they took us on a tour of the United Center. And, um, you know, we got to go in the locker room and uh, Daniel and I were sitting in chairs in front of the lockers and they uh, pointed to Dan- Daniel's chair. And we're like, that's Jordan's chair. And then, uh, you know, whenever he got up, I got to sit in Jordan's chair. Megan was not that interested in this story. Whenever I saw Jordan's chair, it was like, I've sat in that chair. And then she kind of leaned over, looked into my eyes and farted at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to put this down as the thing I'm most excited to see before I go try to save my neighbor from getting beat up by his mom. Uh-huh. <laughs> Godspeed. I really, really hope that they have like a good look at him fucking roofing Steve Kerr. Because <laughs> there's never been video of that, right? No, I don't think so. Dude, he punched, he, he like knocked Steve Kerr out of the practice. That's you crazy. never heard that story? No. Oh, I dude, hope they yeah, have a lot of yeah, he punched Kerr like hard. And I think it was I think it was either I think it might have been 96, I want to say. But yeah, they didn't get along like at all. That's kind of crazy. I it's not like you really get that from Kerr in the documentary. <laughs> I know. Cuz Kerr's just a good dude, you know. He is a good mm-hmm. dude. Okay, so I guess this was a training camp scrimmage, but yeah, he he laid Kerr the fuck down. <laughs> I, I'm sure there's going to be more, but I I was expecting to see more of him being an asshole in practice than we've seen so far. Dude, there there's a little be bit, way more, because okay. I remember hearing that he used to shit on uh, Bill Cartwright all the time. Yeah, and that that was like, like that he hated him, and he clearly hates Kukoc. I mean, he, yeah, he, he very clearly hates Tony Kukoc. I I don't, I just don't know. I was ready for the degree of which he does that to everyone, like the, just the way like. Like like the stuff that he's doing to Kraus, but like like that that I he just appears to pay absolutely no attention to like normal relationships. You know? No, none. That's the thing. Yeah, because the other thing that my favorite Jordan story of all time is uh, not going to be in this at all, and it's Kwame Brown. Yeah, <laughs> like when he, he used to make Kwame Brown cry in practice. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking that's too good, but. I don't know if there's going to be a last dance about those Wizards teams. <laughs> I mean, I mean it does make you respect the fuck out of Phil Jackson. Like everything everyone ever said about Phil Jackson is like just so obviously true. Like any kind of regular coach around Jordan, I, I don't feel like that that would have gone. Like he just obviously wants to coach the team, right? Yeah, like, it's a challenge. Yeah, like all all the stuff that he's saying to the players in practice, the, from what we've seen, is like the shit the coach would say. Like the two guard doesn't normally say that. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, maybe I'll do this with you guys again next week if you don't have a guest. I don't know. Who who are your other big guest ideas? Just all your your co-workers. All my co-workers? Okay. Yeah, and Michael Jordan. (laughs) We've got him lined up for uh, week four. He's going to join us. Did did you remember these teams being just Pippen and Jordan and a bunch of, like, fucking spares? Yes, I thought I thought oh, these Rod- guys were like. I mean, Rodman's yeah. a huge deal. Like I, I definitely feared Tony Kukoc growing up. Like I thought Kukoc was probably a badass. And I thought Ron Harper was probably good when I was like 13, 14, 15. And now looking back, I'm like, these are just kind of like a bunch of Derek Fishers. And there's like Jordan and Pippen and Rodman. Who, yeah, Rodman's good, but there's obviously like a, a cap. Also with cap. Bill saying that Pip was the second best player in the NBA at that time is horrible. Yeah, that ain't happening. You want to I look mean, at me in the face and say Charles Barkley wasn't as good as Scottie Pippen. Yeah, that's insane. On, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Was he top 10? Probably. Yeah. 
But to say he was the, the, the second best player in the league is he's been I mean, even the year that Jordan ages. was gone, he scored 22 a game, which yeah. like that's good. Not everyone can do it, and like pairing that with being one of the you know the best two or three defensive players in the league, that's that's an all star. But it's not the second best player in the league. No, no absolutely not. Now I want to make a list. Now I'm like thinking to myself, okay, well then who would, like. I'll mm-hmm. I'll look through I'll look through the list. I did love week. everything he said about Scotty. Like one that that he was so effusive in his praise. Like he seems like the kind of guy that that I call probably, him alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stockton, yeah. Malone, Kemp, Payton. But I'm talking about like 97, 98. Kemp would have been. I mean, Shaq's there. Kemp was awesome in 97, 98. That they went to the finals in 96. Is there a year where you would have taken Scotty Pippen over Shaq? Hakeem no. Olajuwon, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drexler. I don't know. I, I, Isaiah Thomas. I don't know. Like, what are we? Grant Hill. Yeah, Grant Hill was awesome those times. Um, Shaq was in the league, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, man, top 20. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk. You answer some questions on here, Chuck? Uh, no, nah, because then the people in the, the podcast it won't make any goddamn sense to them. Uh, we, we have comments here. Well, um, people wanted us to talk Carlisle, <laughs> yeah. It was nice seeing Rick Carlisle in it. Man, yeah, Brunson got his ass on Twitter, he got the, yeah. He did. What he that, got, what was he got that? that work in the doc, and then he got the work online. It's something like, Come on, coach, with like the yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, fair. I don't know that I've ever heard like a play-by-play guy or color guy would not say in 2020. And this player looks like he's just wanting his mommy. Was it true or wasn't it? No, I couldn't tell. Yeah, it was true. If it was like Tommy, if it was like Heinsohn, then man, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he still does some Celtics games. I could be wrong. I don't watch the Celtics broadcast. Oh, he does. Yeah. He also yeah. said that Kelly Olynyk was going to be the next Derek. Yeah. <laughs> Same number and everything. So uh, you know, still got time. Um, but yeah, the I I get the sense that Michael Jordan's the kind of guy that uh, you might be able to go through uh, your entire life with him without him ever sitting down and leveling with you about what you've meant to him. He doesn't seem like he's uh, there yeah. to. Uh, you know, he definitely seems like a guy who thinks that praise is going to make you weak. So I wonder if Scotty's ever heard those things. I mean, maybe there's like public interviews where he says stuff to that degree. Um, but like just the things he's saying about Scotty, about how every time someone speaks the name Jordan, they should speak the name Scotty Pippen. I wouldn't be the guy who I was without Scotty Pippen. That was crazy. I love that. And I equally loved uh, him being willing to like look at the fact that Scotty Pippen was like, well, I could have gotten surgery, but I had a big summer. <laughs> I could not believe you said that in the documentary. And Jordan was just like, Yeah, Scotty was being selfish. That was fucked up. I was yeah. not happy that Scotty right. had a big summer planned. He's like, I don't, like- don't want to fuck my summer up. <laughs> really said that. I do I do like that it's it's MJ in this big ass empty house with no one else to hang out with. Yeah. And no one's blowing up his phone. And he's just like finally he's like, Scotty Pippen's the best, man. You can't <laughs> MJ without Without Scottie Pippen, you know, I don't happen without Scottie Pippen, and he's clearly got a drink. He's clearly got some henny in a glass next to him. Yeah, three three fingers at all times. Yeah, if you watch the tape back, but yeah, that was I, I was surprised like he was that just in the bag for Scotty because I knew there was going to be some kind of turbulence that was about to happen, and he's got to say some weird shit about him. But you go ahead and get the nice shit out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I guess my the, the big question I want to get out of here without asking you guys is just given the way that George you, you watch how he talks to the media in this, like like whenever they're like he's like, Are you gonna ask Scotty questions or uh questions about the game? And they're like, Some of both. And he's like, Well, then I'm not gonna answer fucking half of them, more or less. And the guy's like, Well, no about the game, and he's like, There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> um given given all of that stuff and the way that he constantly was that way and like that is the defining thing about him as a public figure is is how guarded and how much he cares about his answers you know the whole uh republicans buy shoes to comment um fucking did you think in our lifetimes that there would ever be a time that you saw him being this candid 
No. Because I still don't really even know why they're why he's doing it now. I mean, yeah, I don't. I mean, he he said like a week ago, people are gonna think he's an asshole. See, so I don't I know why. And like it was, it's his business partners that are the producers on this, and like had gateway yeah. over the footage the, the entire time, and that like you know kind of makes me think like, boy, they're gonna go soft on him. But if that's the case, how are they leaving in that footage of him uh, brushing off the guy asking for the autograph? Because mm -hmm. he thinks that shit makes him look cool. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. maybe. I yeah. mean, it definitely does. I guess exactly. it's more of like what's fine and what like what makes you look cool. That's what. Yeah. It is. But yeah, I. I think if something's remotely fair, they they were leaving it in, like the, him yelling at Ron Harper in practice, like that doesn't have to be in there. You can definitely cut that. Probably think that makes Michael Jordan look cooler. Yeah, and I think like that the LeBron shit got pretty hot for a minute there, like mm. after, after three one and some other shit. Like LeBron started like almost getting into the house, and mm -hmm. immediately LeBron called his production people and was like. This cannot fucking happen. <laughs> we've yeah. got we've got to remind people who I was yeah. for all these people that don't remember, so that you will never put this dude's name next to mine ever again. And Dude, make sure you put that autograph shit in there. <laughs> I I think this doc is silencing the crying meme. That's I was I, gonna say that earlier. I was like, there's a I whole generation the of kids, done. The yeah. whole generation of kids that were just gonna know him as the crying meme guy. No, and now, now, now have, you just forced at him over a quarantine. Yeah. His actual record is too large. Once yeah. once you have to really square up with it for you to to even include that in it. Mm. I'm still I can't wait. I I definitely watch this, you know, another big question about any time you hear about a 10-part documentary is do they really need 10 parts? I would say based on the first two, this is going to be all 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 killer no filler. I'm, yeah. I'm fucking hyped for the next 8 hours. No, they went hard. They clearly just thought they were going to drag this out for 10 weeks and then uh the whole world got a virus and they were like, fuck it, five parts. Yeah. It, five blades. I've um, uh I've heard that they're not uh not done with part ten right now. Oh holy shit, that's stressful. That's stressful. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. And like that they're quarantining while they edit it. Like that, that everyone's like editing from home. Yikes. Don't even um, say that. A couple gonna, things, gonna give couple me things to wrap up. Yeah. Um can we just get a hand clap for Pat Riley? And his white excellence, because that guy is just model of what we all should be. Like he's still popping. Pat Riley's like fucking eighty. Yeah, I crazy. love Pat Riley. Like every time I see Pat Riley, I'm like, this motherfucker. It just looks like he should be in Heat. Like he lives in the movie Heat. Oh yeah, absolutely, total um, fucking Heat. Follow up question: Why are Michael Jordan's eyes so yellow? That was they're, a topic of discussion in my home, I have to admit. They're not going to get to the bottom of the Velveeta. <laughs> I mean, there's John a medical Vince? explanation for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, that was what I was telling Megan. Like, this uncured symptom John of jaundice. <laughs> like, you know, his, his, his kidney is not regulating the bilirubin. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. It's I distracting. It's the liver with the bilirubin. And yeah, that, last, no, it's... Last yeah. thing, um, I'm... I'm really happy that like we've gotten to 2020 and everyone's like gets gets shamed online and clearly like Jordan's like a he's a fucking meme like he's a living meme and his outfits just get memed to death but I'm just really excited that since that since 1990 the man has been wearing suits from the mall and yep. he will not change <laughs> he will not fucking change his How about suit. that little necklace he's got on that's awesome. This is fucking like almost like puka shells or something. Yeah, he had like, he yeah. had like three in practice. Yeah. That first practice footage, he's wearing he's three chains. He's fucking like oh yeah, his um, his gold necklace game early in his career was, was absolutely it. stunning. Love the, be it. the best fit of the whole I don't remember which episode it was though, is when Phil's dressed like Inspector Gadget. Dude, he hops up the bar <laughs> he's like <laughs> yeah. I mean he's always suspenders, which is yeah. one. Yeah, but it's like, and it's like tucked tight too. Like he's about yeah, to. <laughs> Phil was on some shit back then. <laughs> he looks like a fucking ventriloquist, like at all times. Looks uh, like he, like got to just start talking to the little man. Megan and I had a had a running commentary uh, about whether or not Scotty's a cuck. Mm, Scotty like on the one hand, me. she was like, you know, she would bring up like, well, he's yelling at Kraus. How can you? And I'm like, that's. That's all sliding scale. Like, you know, yeah. next to Michael, 
Like he he was the bitch. And then then what I felt like kind of knocked it out for me is whenever they're showing Charles Oakley fucking slapping Scotty as a teammate, just like Man. not mad, just to be like, I just want you to understand exactly Brutal. what your place is, and it's that I'm gonna slap you and you're not gonna do shit. Brutal. We need more oak. We need more oak. Like, Terrible, man. Y'all can y'all can keep your Rodman. Y'all can keep your Rodman. Give me Charles Oakley. That guy is wild ass. He would yeah. be five times more entertaining to me than Rodman. Yeah, he is a bad guy, but it, you know, the right kind of bad guy. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, I'm out of here. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, this is fun, guys. Uh, yeah. I'll talk to you next week. See you right. later. Yeah, just 